Hey guys, Garrett with Tactical Repair here today, and uh, this time we're going to go over installing a secondary and final fuel filter spin-on adapter kit on the multi-fuel engines. This would apply to two and a half ton and five ton multi-fuel equipped trucks. So what we have here is a spin-on adapter kit and filters, uh, both sourced from Jitanka M35.com. Uh, they're reasonably priced and good quality. It comes with both of the filters you need, new O-rings, uh, both of the threaded adapters, and the adapter plates themselves. And uh, of course the instructions, uh, you may or may not need them. Uh, they're very um, short, I'll put it that way, but <clears throat> it only takes a little bit of figuring out. So Anyway, the, the tools you'll need for it are uh, some sort of 90 degree pick for removing this old o-ring out of the housing you'll need may or may not need a 7 16 wrench depending on the kind of bleeder screw you have on top of your filter assembly you need a pair of pliers and a 5 8 wrench or socket and ratchet and we'll go over to the truck and i will show you how it goes from there all right guys so we're up on the truck we've got all of our tools and parts laid out and ready to go <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is you want to open your bleed screw here and this is what your 7 16 wrench is for now you may or may not have this kind of bleeder some of them just have a little T handle here you can unscrew with your fingers and open it up uh, you don't have to take it out just loosen it up so it'll get some air in there then what I do and once again not all trucks have these some of them have been broken off some of them have a different fitting on them You've got a barbed fitting on the drain here. I slide a piece of 3 8 fuel line or quarter inch fuel line on there. Open up the screw so you can drain the fuel out. Then you break loose your top bolt here, your 5 8 center bolt. Back it out a few turns. That way you've got some slack in it. And you just bump the side of the filter housing a couple times till it breaks loose and you get some air in there. And the filter housing will empty itself and now i've got a drain pan below there to catch the fuel you don't want to mess i've already broken this one loose uh, just to get started make it a little easier on myself to make this video for you guys uh, i've still got to do the second one so uh, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and take these filter cans off of here and get everything ready and i'll be back with you in a second all right guys so i've got the filter cans off and out of the way and next step is to remove the old o-rings for the filter can so this is where your 90 degree pick comes in and i'm sorry about this ac part in the way here it's making it kind of difficult to get a good video for you but uh I'll do what i can anyway you get in here with the pick get up in there and grab the old o-ring and you know try to work it out of there sometimes they're old and rotten you got to kind of dig them out a piece at a time yeah I see that that's no good all right so oh what a pain in the ass all right there it comes so pull that out and drop it you should have a drain pan down there anyway and we're going to remove the other one hopefully it comes out easier Oh yeah, there it is. Now, you're done with your pick. So you put that back in your toolbox or your roll cart or wherever you got it. Now you've got brand new O-rings. And these are just the standard O-rings that would come with factory type replacements. Now, this is difficult enough to do when you're not holding a camera or camera phone. Gotta work it up in the groove. All the way around. And it should keep itself in the groove if you don't have it twisted, just like that. Where's the other one? There it is. So we're gonna install our second O-ring. Find the back of the groove. There it is. 
I'm gonna slowly work it around on both sides. And there it is. All right. So, on these adapters, there's a top and a bottom. You can see a little bit different on each side. The top side is the part with the raised lip around the outside. That's going to act like the top lip of your original filter can, and that's going to seat against the O-ring and on the factory filter housing. So, what you want to do to put those on, you take these other smaller O-rings that are supplied with the kit, we go back under here and stick them up on the center hub. Make sure you don't get them twisted. And they will keep themselves on. Get the other one. Same thing. Oh, well, that's installed nicely. Now you're going to take your adapter plate and threaded adapter install like so oh you know what actually I forgot to mention earlier you're going to need a socket and a ratchet to fit this nut here so you can hold it steady so what we're going to do is walk over to the old toolbox we're going to open up I should have socket in a three inch drawer that'll fit that let's try let's try one inch right off the bat there we go the one inch will fit so you're probably not going to need a deep socket for that since it's going on the opposite way yep there we go a handy dandy snap on ratchet and grain pneumatic sockets gonna do is put all this together like so and you want to start with the back filter first put the front one on well believe me it makes it harder to do and stick it in there and begin threading it now it's threading into that original top nut there so tighten it up by hand down here so you just see starting to pull that center nut down. And you want to put it on your ratchet. Make sure your ratchet's on the proper rotation direction. Put it back on. And you should be able to Tighten this up alone without, let's see if I can get both here, yeah, see it's not spinning the top nut because it's got its own resistance. Now you don't want to tighten this up too much. I believe the TMs call for 15 foot pounds originally tightening that center nut and the directions with this say about 20 foot pounds is what the directions that they had to, uh, include with the kit recommend so we're gonna do to just tight enough torque because I've been doing this long enough I know what about tight enough feels like on things that aren't super sensitive torque wise like this but if you don't have a lot of experience with this definitely better to use a torque wrench that way you don't break off the threaded part of your brand new adapter kit and have to buy another one so we've got number one on you can see it in there now it's time for number two let's see if it goes on as easily i bet it won't nothing ever works smooth twice in a row not for me anyway uh, so let's see what we've got here mm-hmm oh Oh, we got action. Now, I should mention, although with the fit of the new machine parts, you shouldn't have to worry about it. 
but you do want to make sure when you're tightening things up and putting them together that the edge on the top of the plate doesn't get offset and sitting on top of the lip of the old adapter. Uh, if you have it offset then the whole thing will cant when you're tightening it down and you'll crack something and damage something that certainly won't seal. So keep an eye out, pay attention when you're putting it together. Don't let it get out of whack on you. You will have issues that you don't want to have. Alright, so number two is getting pretty well hand tight. Put a ratchet back on it. That's good enough. Now, if you do have a leak, you can still go back later on after you've got everything together and put a little more torque on these top bolts, the 5 8 You don't have to take the filters back off and mess with all that. So, we've got our bases installed. Now I'm gonna uh, put the filters on. And where did I leave my filters? All right, tell you what, let me find the filters and I'll be back with you in a second. I think I left them on the bench. All right, we're back. So I did in fact leave both of the filters on the bench. I thought I grabbed them, but I didn't. So here we are. Now, these are fuel filters, not oil filters. You don't really have to worry about oiling this gasket before you put it on. Uh, just pay attention when you change the filters, make sure that's not stuck to the damn adapter. So what you want to do with these is that you always put the back one on first. If you put the front one on first, then you, you'll find out that you can't get to the, the back one, uh, especially if you have a heater installed or something. So we'll go down here and see if we can get to catch a thread without dropping it in my drain pan, which I should have moved actually already. Okay. So now it's butted up, so we're gonna get. This is something you really need two hands for, but. <clears throat> okay. It should be tight enough. If it's not, I'll come back with a strap wrench later and put a little more torque on it. Now put our second one in. And you know, I keep saying do the back one first or you won't be able to get to it. Um, it may not look like it, but go ahead and try it once. You know, nobody believes that until they try to do it themselves and they're like, well, shit, no, I really can't. So just heed my advice, please. It'll save you some trouble. Okay, that's good. Now remember, with an LD or LDT motor, you've got about a max of 40 to 50 PSI pressure running through those under a load. With an LDS motor, you've got 40 to 45 pounds at idle, and you're running up to about 80 pounds of fuel pressure in those filters when you're under a load. So you really do need to make sure those filters are on there good and tight. Uh, of course, don't over tighten them. You don't want to break the fitting off or strip threads. But uh, on my truck, because I've got an LDS, I will take a nylon strap wrench and put on after I've got them hand tight and give it another probably a quarter of a turn. Um, and even then, I've still had some gasket leaks. Um, usually when the filter's starting to get towards the end of its life anyway, but um, just something of note. So the last step, now that we've got everything on, everything's tight and secure, we've got our bleeder loose, and we're going to go in the cab. We're going to flip our main power on. And that's going to turn the fuel pump in the tank on, if your pump works. 
And now, what we're watching for is fuel to escape here. As that pump's running, it's filling our filters. Give it just a minute here and we'll start getting some action. I hear air coming out of the bleeder. Oh, there we go. Okay, fuel, fuel, fuel. No more air, okay. All right. That's hand tight. What do I do with my 7 16 wrench? You know, somehow, I could have this thing attached to me with a string and I would still lose it. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to have to tighten that up with a wrench. Oh, I know what I did. I dropped it in a damn drain pan. All right, well, that's complete. It's all on there and together. And that is your secondary and final filter spin-on adapter install for an M35 or Multifuel 510. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.